right? Mm -hmm. So what you could say is the sting of death is to see your nakedness. Mm. Yes. And to be filled with fear and then a mind filled with laboring and toiling to clothe upon yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Yep, now, yep. the sting of life, right, mm -hmm. is... How do we, the sting of death? The sting of life is righteousness, the fruit of God's life, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what that does is that perfects love in a person's heart because it causes them to see themselves as not being naked, right. but as being clothed oh, upon yes. with the very life of God. If you're clothed upon with the life of God, guess what your heart says? Abba, I am a son, I am a daughter. Right. Abba. Right, right. So the sting of life is that you'll see yourself as being swaddled in light and life. Meaning, when is a baby swaddled? When the parent or somebody will come in and grab that baby and swaddle that baby, that baby's mine. So the sting of life is that you'll see that God has come as your father and swaddled you with light and life and he's picked you up and drawn you near to himself and you'll see yourself in his face you'll see that he sees himself in you and your heart will say abba right, mm -hmm. right. and the the sting of that or the fruit of that will be righteousness yes. it's like what paul said that mm -hmm. you're either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness right yeah. and he's, what he's talking about there is if you consider yourself dead to death you won't see yourself as being naked. You won't be filled with fear. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you won't try, you won't present your members to sin by trying to clothe upon yourself. How do you present your members to sin? You try to clothe upon yourself with light. Adam presented his members to sin when he tried to clothe himself with fig leaves. And so he became a slave to sin. Right. Right? right. He became a slave to laboring and toiling for life. And then what came forth out of him? Thorns and thistles. Yes. But when you consider yourself alive to God, what does that mean? To conceive yourself braided together with his life. Mm -hmm. You become a slave to righteousness. Meaning, the things that come out of you, because your flesh has been put to rest, and your heart has been perfected by the love of God. Meaning, fear has been replaced with love. The fruit of that is that your body's taken captive by life. Yes. Your body becomes a vessel of life. And guess what life brings forth? Love, peace, joy, exactly. kindness, unsuffering, meekness, patience, yeah. trust, all those kinds of things. Why was Jesus able to trust Abba? His heart was stung by life. Right. Right. Trust is a fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. What's the Spirit? The Spirit of life. Yes. His heart was stung with life. He saw himself as being wrapped in light and life. Therefore, he knew he is the Son. Right? Yes. That caused him to trust God. It brought forth trust in his heart. Mm -hmm. The spirit did. The spirit of what? The spirit of life. Yeah. His members were taken captive by the spirit of life. He couldn't have done anything else but then love. Uh -huh. Because his body was taken captive and put to rest. Right? Yes. And so that we, we, we haven't understood. I'm just saying, man. We haven't understood the effect that death has had on our souls. We haven't understood that that's the thing that is the problem. This is shocking to people, but do you know that Adam didn't even try to clothe himself till after he saw he was naked? Hmm. Well, what did he see when he saw he was naked? Because after he saw he was naked is when his mind became filled with laboring and toiling. Sure. Right. So what filled him with laboring and toiling? The nakedness he saw. What brought forth the nakedness? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Paul describes the whole Adam experience in the latter part of Romans 7. He's describing Adam at the end of Romans 7. He's given us play by play what went down in that God hmm. in Genesis. And so Paul says, sin found an opportunity to manifest itself in our flesh. How did it find an opportunity to manifest itself in our flesh? Death manifested itself in our bodies. Yeah. Our bodies became perishing, perishable bodies that were perishing, right? Mm -hmm. That's what happened to Adam. That's why Paul says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall save me from what? This body of death. That's the nakedness Adam saw. When Paul comes and says, who shall save me from this body of death? That's the Adam man. That's what Adam felt. He saw his nakedness. He saw that death had manifested in his body. 
He saw his body was perishing. He saw himself clothed in death and darkness. Oh, wretched man, who shall save me from this death? And he began working to try to save himself from the death. Mm -hmm. And the more he tried to work to save himself from the death, the more he saw he couldn't bring forth life to clothe himself with. He could only bring forth thorns and thistles. Because it says he tried to clothe himself with fig leaves and he was still naked. And so what did Adam say? Or what did Paul say in Romans 7? I see the good. And the more I try to bring forth the good, I find the law in where? In where? In my members. Well, what is in his members? Death. So I see the good that I want to be clothed upon with good. And I find the more I engage this dying flesh to clothe upon myself with good, I find that I can't bring forth the good. I can only bring forth the evil. I'm still naked. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall save me from this body of death? That's Adam. Adam saw his body of death. And that compelled him, or it took his members captive to trying to clothe upon himself. And then he tried to clothe upon himself, and he said, My goodness, I'm still naked. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall save me from this body of death? Then Paul goes into, I thank God, by our Lord Jesus Christ, that he has saved me from the law of sin and death by the law of what? The spirit of life. Yes. Now, what did God come and do to Adam in that place where he was trying to clothe himself and then he saw he's still naked? Ah, who will save me from this body? God came and clothed upon him. Yeah. What was God prophesying of? I will save you by the spirit of my life. I will clothe upon you with the spirit of my life. Yes. And so we haven't understood that death is the thing that will compel us to works. Right. And listen, there's nothing wrong with us outlining grace and works so people can at least sit with an idea that says, oh, it isn't by our works. It's by grace. Right. And that's a beautiful revelation. But that doesn't possess the power to save you from living by your works. No. The only thing that can actually put your flesh to rest is the word of eternal life. The more you try to rest from your works, the more you'll be implementing your flesh to try to bring rest to yourself. That's right. <laughs> and you'll be working your works for rest. Right. The only thing that can put a person to rest and actually purge them from working is the word of eternal life. Do you know why? Because for your conscience to be purged from sin doesn't mean for your conscience to be purged from your bad deeds. It means for your conscience to be purged from your nakedness. Yes. It means for your conscience to be purged from death. It means for you to no longer see yourself as being clothed in death, to no longer see yourself as death reigning over you, but for you to see you're braided together with eternal life, for you to see yourself clothed with life. And then your heart will begin saying, there's nothing to labor and toil for. Right. I've been clothed upon by the Almighty God. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now your conscience is purged from works. Yes. Boy. Because what does a man work for that he already has? <laughs> and so death told us something very real. You don't have life. If we were created for life, I guarantee you, we felt like we should have life. Right. And so the moment we say we don't have life, that's going to take us captive and make us start working for life. So God doesn't come and say, listen, man, just rest. No, no, no. He comes and clothes upon us with life because in the day we see ourselves clothed in life, our flesh will go to rest because our hearts will say, what does a man work for that he already has? Mm. And that's what it means for your conscience to be purged from sin. Yes. We only looked at sin from the perspective of, well, God was angry with us because of our sin. For your conscience to be purged from sin, you have to look at what is the wages of sin? Death. What was Adam's problem? He saw his nakedness. What did Paul say his nakedness was? A body of death. I'm clothed in a dying body. So for your conscience to be purged from sin is for your conscience to be purged from the wages of sin, which is death. Wow. And you no longer see yourself as naked. But you see yourself as been clothed upon by the Lamb of God who took away the death and the sin of the world. Right. Now, that causes me to enter into God's rest. It puts me to rest. It makes me to lie down in the tender green grass. It doesn't come and tell me to lie down in the tender green yeah. grass. It yeah. comes and does something to me right. that will cause me to say, well, hell. This is, my soul is fat. <laughs> my cup runneth over. Right. Why am I going to go over to the other side of the hill? Right. Why am I going to go to that river over there? Right. Man, it's fat right here. Right. Uh, 
And then <laughs> you maketh me to lie down. This is Jesus talking. Oh, man. And what does he say right before that? The Lord is my shepherd. I do not lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I am not naked. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all things that pertain to life and godliness. The Lord is my shepherd. I am the possessor of eternal life. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm braided together with the eternal one. I do not lack. <coughs> that maketh me to lie down in the tender green grass. Right? Yeah. And so that's, we, we've kind of, and there's no shame in this, because as we continue to walk with God, our thoughts become more clear, and we begin to see how to come at this thing. And there's nothing wrong with saying it's not by our works. That's true. And there's nothing wrong with going through a whole doctrinal dissertation about it's not by works, it's by grace. So people can at least begin to see and start looking at the right thing. But man, the way we're actually put to rest is by hearing the word of how God has conquered the death in our bodies with his life. And as our hearts are persuaded with that, our conscience is purged from laboring and toiling because what does a man labor for that he already has? See, the Hebrew guys were laboring to cleanse themselves from sin. Right. Right. But God come and cleansed us from sin. What does it mean? We hadn't seen that death is what was the problem. So when we say cleanse from sin, we think cleanse from God's anger with us. Right. No, no, no. Cleanse from sin means to be cleansed from our body of death. What does Bertie bring out about the Septuagint said in Isaiah 53? It pleased God to heal him. It pleased God to cleanse him from the wound. What was the wound? Death. The death of the cross was the wound. It pleased God to cleanse Jesus from death. When did he cleanse Jesus from death? In the resurrection. That's right. Was, now this is where, it, so in some words, it says bruise him? Bruise, in the Hebrew. Okay. It, it, it says bruise him. Okay. And even that, there's two interpretations okay. that I think are valid based on the context and the language there. It pleased God for him to be bruised mm -hmm. so that death could be conquered. Right. And that's, a, that's just a paraphrase. Okay. Right? right? And then the Septuagint, you could say it two ways. You could say it pleased God to heal Jesus from the wound. Or you could say that it pleased God to heal us from the wound. And the way it, he healed us from the wound was by Jesus being bruised by the serpent on our behalf. And then he crushed the serpent's head. Right? So God's trying to cleanse us from death. He's trying to cleanse our conscience from death. He's trying to cleanse our conscience from the belief that we're not clothed upon. That we're naked. God, 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 God. If you... Yeah. There's nothing wrong with saying, I wait for this mortal body to be clothed upon. Mm -hmm. But if that conclusion leads you to the place where that describes you as lacking something, then you got it wrong. Right? Right? So to say that this mortal body will still be clothed upon is not to say that I have not been swaddled in life. It is not to say that I have not already been wrapped in light and life. Right. For we have the spirit of life. Right. We're not waiting to get the spirit of life. Right. We have it now. That means we have been wrapped in light and life. And we even wait for that life to yeah. manifest in our mortal bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Right, right. Does, does that make sense about the Adam thing? Do you guys see how yeah. he didn't immediately start laboring after he ate from the tree? Right. You notice, it's an interesting thing, but go and read the scripture. It says, and then he saw his nakedness. That's what compelled him. Mm -hmm. So the way God puts us to rest from our laboring and toiling, which could be a number of things. We could be laboring and toiling through sex, through drugs, through alcohol, through physical fitness, through food, through all kinds of things, trying to bring ourselves peace, through our own labors and toils to try to bring forth good fruit. Sure. We could be doing all those kinds of things. The way God comes and puts us to rest is he comes to persuade our hearts of that we possess life. That removes the feeling of lack. Right? Got it. And that's how we rest from our labors. Mm. Does, does that make sense? That was good. When Do you guys see? Up, when you 